greetings again in the name of Jesus. The word of God is going to prevail. The word of God is going to prevail. Uh, I want to share the word of God with you. Second Peter chapter 1 the letter by Apostle Peter. Second Peter, the second letter by Apostle Peter. Listen to the words of this letter. Second Peter chapter 1. First Peter and Second Peter. Chapter 1. Verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brothers, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. Let me look for a pen here. Okay, I'll read the verse again. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 10. Wherefore, the rather, brothers, Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fail. Oh, you shall not, no, it doesn't say you shall never fail. It says you shall never fall. Sorry. I misread it. It's, it's not you shall not fail. It's you shall not fall. So now, the Bible clearly teaches us that there are certain things which when we do, we are not going to fall. We are not going to apostatize. We are not going to draw back. We are not going to fall from grace. If we do certain things. Now, beware of a certain group of heretics call the narcissists, you know what they do? Or what they will tell you? They will tell you, it is by grace alone. It is by faith alone. And it is by Jesus alone. You cannot do anything. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Now, when someone comes to you and says, faith alone, grace alone, Jesus alone. It sounds very, very true. But that is not what scripture teaches. Scripture does not teach that. Now, you see, when they are telling you that it is by grace alone, by Jesus alone, and by faith alone, what they are telling is that you do nothing. It is the grace of God. Why do they say that? The reason they say that is because they don't understand scripture. You know where they don't understand? It is a broad vacuum which causes them not to understand. And this vacuum comes from Calvinism. The once saved, always saved group. Where they say, you do nothing about your salvation. And it is not you. You don't have a will. God will save you whether you like it or not. Or not. That is a lie from Hell. Now, where we read the second letter of Peter chapter 1 in verse 10, I will read again, but this time I will ask you to mark certain phrases or to mark certain words so that when I continue, you understand exactly what I'm saying. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 10, I will read again. Wherefore the rather, brothers, Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. So underscore the word your calling to make your calling and election sure. So you can make your calling and election sure. And it says so that you will not fall. And then so, so now there are two things which I want you to see that you are supposed to do. One, to make your calling and elect, election sure. And then the second thing is that so that you don't fall. So 
There are things which when you do, you are not going to back, backslide. And the opposite is true. That there are things which when you don't do, you will backslide. Now, in this simple a program I'm doing. I don't want to concentrate on the things to be done or the things not to be done. But I'll just read in 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 in, 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 in passing the things which we are asked to do so that we don't fall. So let us go to what to verse one uh, or to verse okay to verse five, Second Peter chapter one verse five, and beside this, giving all diligence. Add to your faith virtue. So now when someone says to you, it's only faith alone, do you see that they have skipped something which is called virtue? When somebody says it is grace alone, do you see that they have skipped something called what? And to virtue knowledge. So it's not grace alone. It's not faith alone. There is virtue, there is knowledge. And then it says, to knowledge, temperance. To be sober. Hey, grace alone. Grace alone. Faith alone. Faith alone. Jesus alone. No. Virtue. Knowledge. Temperance. What else? And. To virtue knowledge. And to knowledge temperance. And to temperance patience. And to patience godliness. What do you do? You are the one who adds these things in your life. It's not God who adds them. You add them. Verse 5, I'll read again. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. So there is some addition to faith. So when someone comes to you, he says, it is by faith alone. Brrr, offside. When someone comes to you and says, it is by grace alone, brr, offside. There is virtue, there is knowledge, there is temperance, there is patience. And all these things are coming in the same equation. So now, when I am a preacher and I come to you, it will sound as if I have given you the gospel and I say, it's by grace alone. You know, I, they, they say it is by grace alone because they don't even understand what grace itself is. When someone comes to you and they tell you it is only by grace, ask them what is the definition of grace? Because when you understand what grace alone, you will see that grace is not alone. And you will see that grace has got so many facets or it has got so many branches or it has got so many colors. It has got so many roots, more than eight roots of grace only. And you say grace alone. What are you talking about? So now we see that you add to your faith virtue. You add to your virtue temperance. You add to your temperance knowledge. To knowledge patience yourself. Not God. Not Jesus. Let us continue. And to godliness brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness charity love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you should neither be barren nor unfruitful in knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 9. But he that lacks these things is blind. How many blind Christians are we having today? Or children of God who are blind? You are walking but you can't see. Grace alone, faith alone, Jesus alone. Why? There are things which you are lacking and as a result, you are blind. And you know, there is nothing as dangerous as a blind man leading other blind people. This is the reason why you see that churches today are led by blind men. That's why you see that Jesus said, how can a blind man lead another blind man? The two or the people who are being led and the leader, they will fall into the ditch, all of them. So this issue of being told grace alone, faith alone, Jesus alone is satanic. There is no such a thing in the Bible. We saw that you must add virtue, you must add patience, you must add knowledge, you must add you 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 you, you must not add patience, you must add so many things in the equation. 
And then it says, if you lack these things, you are unfruitful in your walk with God and you are blind. Grace alone. Faith alone. Jesus alone. Where do you get that? First, second Peter, chapter 1, verse 5. There is a list of things you must do. Now, I want to look at the issue of grace. What is grace? The Bible says, for the grace of God is appeared to all men, teaching us to deny ungodliness in this present age. So the grace teaches us to deny sin. Who denies sin? Yourself, the believer. Let me show you something. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 10 about the grace of God. First Peter chapter 4 verse 10. So I told you that grace has got many roots. It has got many branches. It has got many seeds. Like if you are in an aeroplane, there are many seeds. So that is the same with grace. That grace is not just a one-dimensional facet. It has got many dimensions to it. So first Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Listen to this. As every man has received the gift, even so minister the same one to, to another, as good stewards, of the manifold grace of God. What is the manifold grace of God? Or the meaning of the word manifold? You see, the word manifold is like, let me try to give you a simple illustration. When I say manifold colors, okay, I see something which is of manifold colors, like my tie. Although I see red, I see green, I see white, I see black. So, on the same note, I see some different colors. Or oh, let me give you an example of the rainbow. In the rainbow, the rainbow is of manifold colors. Meaning there is red, there is green, there is white, there is black, there is blue, there is lilac. All the colors of the world, when you look at the rainbow, you will find them. Why? The rainbow is of manifold colors. So is grace. It is of manifold colors. Meaning, you can talk of grace in salvation. You, talk, you can talk of grace in forsaking sin yourself. You can talk of great grace in getting healing from cancer by the spirit of grace from God. You can talk of grace by rejecting to live a sinful lifestyle. You can talk of grace by being protected from a fatal accident. On Monday, that is four days ago, I was nearly involved in a fatal crash. But because of the grace of God, I survived. That is one part of the grace of God. Why is the stewards of God a minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God? So the grace of God is of dimensional, many dimensions. You can't say this alone. It doesn't work that way. So now, what am I trying to point you to? I told you that the heresies of this kind of teaching come from Calvinists, or they are called the Reformed Theologists, the Reformed Preachers. It says, when you get saved, you do nothing with your salvation. There's nothing you can do. You add nothing. Because it's by grace alone, faith alone. And Jesus alone, that is a lie. 
I have shown you in Second Peter chapter one, verse five, where it says, "Add to virtue, patience." This, 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 this. So there are so many things you add to virtue. There are so many things you add to grace. There are so many things you add to faith. So it says, if you don't have those things, if you don't add those things, you are blind. That is the word of God. Now, I come to you and say, it's by grace alone. It's by faith alone. I've lied to you. Now, I want to show you something which these proponents of this false doctrine will be telling you to run away from. I want to show you where their mistake is. Now, for the sake of time, I'll just give you the verse, but I'm not going to read it, but I'll go and touch a verse which goes in line with it. But because of time, I will not read the verse itself. So now, when you look at the book of Jeremiah chapter 18, where vessels are being spoken of, so we are vessels and God is the potter. So whatever God wants us to be, that's what we become because there's nothing we can do. There's nothing clay can do in the hands of a potter. That's a lie. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. What I want you to know is keep Jeremiah 18 in your memory. Verse 1, 2, 3 to verse 4 where we are told that God tells Jeremiah, go to the potter's house and see how he molds a vessel into his liking. Now, when they read that verse, they just say, God does whatever he wants with somebody. If he makes a bad thing, he made it so that he can destroy it. Or if he made a bad vessel, he made it purposely because he wants to destroy it. That is easy. That, that's, that's God. What type of a potter will wake up and go and construct vessels for the mere fact of destroying them. I always say it this way. My grandmother, when I was growing up in Zimbabwe, in my country, she was a good vessel molder. She will make these big pots. She will go and dig the soil. She knew the type of soil she was supposed to, to have. She will mix the soil and she will take a certain type of soil and mix it and put water and put some little bit of cement and concrete and put inside. And then she will construct a vessel, which sometimes when you try to crush it, it will be crushed. When then when it's bad, you will destroy it and make another one until it makes a good one. So now I can't picture my grandmother waking up, digging, looking for water mixing this the, the clay to make vessels to destroy what type of person would that be the same with god you think god can just make vessels to destroy them so now i told you we have in mind jeremiah 18 and then now i'm going to take you to second timothy chapter 2 verse 21 so now this goes hand in hand with what i read in first peter or second peter chapter 1 where I told you that there are things which when you do, you will not fall. You will be somebody who is tempted as sightseeing because he says when you don't do those things, you are blind. Now, 2 Timothy, I'll go. Listen to this. Listen to this. Jesus alone. Faith alone. And grace alone. There's no such a thing. Second, Corinth, Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 21. Okay, let me start from verse 20. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Verse 21, the verse I want you to take note of. If a man therefore purge himself. So do you see that there is something which is called self-purging? You know, I like Ndebele. Ndebele is a uzbambe. Uztiva. Kujibata. Kujidi. Kujibata. Self-purging. He says, if you purge yourself, if a man therefore purge himself from this, 
So you see that there are things a man is to page himself from. We saw in Second Timothy, chapter, in Second Peter, where it says, "If you do these things, grace, faith, and blah blah blah,", blah. and then now he says there are things. What does he say? He says in verse twenty one, "If a man therefore page himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified." So do you see that sanctification comes when you page yourself? Faith alone. Grace alone. Jesus alone. Where is sanctification? So he says, if you page yourself, what happens? Ye shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the master's use. So, as a vessel, you have to self-page yourself. There are things which you, you have to do yourself. That's why when you see where we read in Peter, it says, if you don't have these things, you are blind. So, what do we see with this grace alone, faith alone, and Jesus alone heresy? You people who are teaching this heresy, today, repent. You know why you say that you are running away from responsibility? <laughs> there is a responsibility of self-paging you must come face to face with. And you are running away from it. Say, Jesus alone, faith alone, grace alone. You don't want to face the truth. So there is something which is called self-paging. You, 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 you self-page yourself. Do you want me to give you another verse which goes hand in hand with this? First John chapter 3 verse 3. Self-paging. First John chapter 3. You do certain things yourself when you wait. Not, for, not someone doing it for you. First John 3 verse 3. And every man, okay, first John chapter 3, verse 3. And every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. If you have hope in Christ, the hope of eternal life, you purify yourself, not Jesus purifying you. Not God cleansing you. Not your pastor cleansing you. But self-cleansing. This is what Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. He says, I keep my body under subjection. Lest when I have preached to other people, I myself will be found to be a cast away. I have preached to others about adultery and I'm sleeping around with other people's wives. I've preached to other people about love and I am as cold-hearted as a lizard. Why? Page yourself. First, second call, Timothy chapter 2, 21. And then first John 3, 3. Purify.